This is the Line and Angle Relationships tutorial. Let's first talk about parallel lines. Parallel lines are two lines that are in the same plane and never intersect. So I've written out a couple examples for you. The first example here on the left, you can see they're just heading up into the right direction, these two lines. We'll call them line 1 and line 2. We know that they're parallel because they have the parallel symbol here, these little arrows, denoting that these two lines are going to continue on in this direction forever. And they're never going to intersect, so this line will never cross that line. The second example of lines is these guys here. Again, you can tell that they're parallel because they have the parallel marks here and here. So an example of parallel lines in everyday life would be in the picture on the right hand side. Take a look at the fences that run down on the left and right side of this road. For the most part, these two fences run in parallel lines. They'll never intersect. So long as that road keeps going straight that direction, those two fences are never going to cross each other. They're just going to keep running parallel to each other. Okay, so let's talk about another type of line. This type of line are the perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines are two lines that are in the same plane and intersect at exactly a 90 degree angle. The slopes of these two lines are the negative reciprocals of each other. Take a look at the example on the bottom left. We'll call this line line 1 and the vertical line line 2. You can tell that these two lines intersect right here at a 90 degree angle because we've drawn in that red box that indicates a 90 degree angle in geometry. Now, when we say that the slopes of those two lines are the negative reciprocals of each other, what that means is this. Let's say that line 1 had a slope, m, which means slope, is equal to 1 half. Well, because they're perpendicular, that means that the slope of line 2 would have to be the negative reciprocal. So, whatever the sign is in front of the first line, so in this case it was a positive 1 half, we switch that to the opposite sign, so in this case now it's negative, and we take the reciprocal of the flat fraction, so we flip it. So now instead of 1 over 2, it's 2 over 1. An example of perpendicular lines in everyday life is this sign right here. This sign was nailed to the post to intersect it exactly at a 90 degree angle. It makes this sign nice and level right here. Okay, let's move on. Now that we know about parallel lines and perpendicular lines, let's talk about skew lines. Skew lines are two lines that are not in the same plane, not parallel, and do not intersect. So take a look at this image and I'll give you an example of some skew lines. Here, the top of this first wooden dam runs this direction. And in the back, you can see a second wooden dam, right here, running in this direction. Now you can tell that the second wooden dam is higher than the first. So if the first line continued on in this direction, it would actually go right underneath the second line in the back. So these two lines are in different planes. The first line is on a lower plane, and the second line is on a higher plane. They're obviously not parallel because the line on top is running left to right, whereas the line on the bottom is kind of running forward to back. And they're never going to intersect because they're not on the same plane. They can't touch each other. So that's an example of skew lines. They can't be on the same plane, they cannot be parallel, and they'll never intersect. Now that we've heard about parallel lines, perpendicular lines, and skew lines, let's talk about planes for a moment. You can also have parallel planes. And that's two planes that never intersect, just like with parallel lines. So in this case, we've got a couple pairs of parallel planes in the picture that I'm going to indicate. The first is the nice flat plane of the bridge, running along this direction. You'll notice that that bridge is going to be exactly parallel to the water down below it. They're both nice and flat, running left to right across the image. And they're both never going to touch each other. The bridge plane is elevated above the water plane. And they run exactly parallel to each other. The bridge plane will just continue out straight over the top of the water plane. 
I've drawn that off to the right also. This is just an example of two planes running at an angle, but still above and below each other and parallel to each other. So you could actually kind of draw in a box if you wanted to indicate this in kind of a three-dimensional space. You can sort of see how this makes almost like a rectangle. And rectangles, kind of in a cube form like this, the top side of the cube is never going to intersect with the bottom plane of the cube. Those two planes are going to run exactly parallel to each other. They could go off in any direction and still never intersect. One plane would always be above the other plane. Alright, so that's parallel planes. Now that we've discussed lines and angles, let's talk a little bit about the angle relationships that form from lines. First, let's talk about a transversal line. A transversal is a line that crosses two lines that are in the same plane at two different points. So let me show you an example of that. Here we've got, let's call them line 1 again and line 2. And we'll call our transversal T, T the transversal. You can see that line 1 and 2 are in the same plane. They're in the plane of your monitor. And the transversal is cutting across those two lines. Since it's cut across those two lines, it's actually made eight different angles. And we've labeled those angles here, one through eight. Now, let's discuss the relationship that those angles have with each other. First thing we want to discuss is alternate interior angles. That's two angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal that are not adjacent and between the lines that the transversal intersects. So let me show you what we mean by that. Let's pick two angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal that are not adjacent. So I'm going to pick 4 and 6 here. So we're doing all this in blue for alternate interior angles. 4 and 6, they are on opposite sides of the transversal line T. And they're not adjacent to each other, meaning they're not touching each other. They're also between the lines that the transversal intersects, so lines 1 and 2. They're on the interior of those two lines. So we would call these alternate interior angles. Now 3 and 5 are also alternate interior angles. They're on opposite sides. I'll mark them differently so you know that these two are a pair of alternate interior. They're on opposite sides of the transversal and they're inside the two lines that the transversal is cutting. And they're also not adjacent to each other. Now let's talk about alternate exterior angles. We'll do these in green. Alternate exterior angles are two angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal that are not adjacent and outside of the lines that the transversal intersects. So we want two angles that are on opposite sides of the transversal and not adjacent to each other and outside the lines. So I'm going to pick angle 1 and angle 7. Again, they're not adjacent to each other. They're on opposite sides of the transversal. One's kind of on the left side and one's on the right side. And they're outside lines 1 and 2. Now another pair of alternate exterior angles would be angles 2 and 8. Another angle relationship I'd like to talk to you about is consecutive interior angles. Consecutive interior angles are two angles that are on the same side of the transversal and are between the two lines that the transversal intersects. Let's identify a few consecutive interior angles. The first ones I see would be angles 4 and 5. Angles 4 and 5 are consecutive interior angles because they're on the same side of the transversal and between the two lines that the transversal intersects. Another pair of consecutive interior angles would be angles 3 and 6. Again, because they're on the inside of the two lines being intersected by the transversal, and they're on the same side of the transversal. In this case, they're kind of on the right-hand side of the transversal. The last type of angle relationships I'd like to talk to you about are corresponding angles. Those are two angles that are on the same side of the transversal. However, 
One is between the two lines that the transversal intersects, and the other is outside. So let's identify some corresponding angles. In this case, there's going to be four pairs. The first pair I see is angles 1 and 5. Because they're on the same side of the transversal, however, one is between the two lines of the transversal that it intersects, and the other is outside. The one is outside, and the five is in between lines one and two. Another pair that I see is four and eight. I'll indicate them like this so you know that they're a pair as well. Another pair of corresponding angles would be two and six. The two is outside and the 6 is inside, and they're both on the same side of the transversal. And the last pair, if you can see it, would be lines 3, or angles 3, and 7. Again, 3 is on the inside of the two lines, lines 1 and 2, and 7 is on the outside, and they're both on the same side of the transversal. So those are all the angle relationships you should typically be aware of in geometry.